In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of water. It's important to understand the properties of water in order to understand how water can form a solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture where a solute is mixed into a solvent. Homogeneous means that the mixture looks the same throughout, and so when you mix the solute into the solvent, it disappears and you can no longer see it. When water is involved in the solution, it's going to be the solvent, and water has some interesting properties that make it a good solvent. We're going to talk about three. Number one, water is a liquid at standard conditions. Water has a high surface tension, and solid water is less dense than liquid water. So first off, water is a liquid at standard conditions. The state of matter, in other words, if it's a solid, liquid, or gas, depends on a couple of factors. Mainly, how heavy the molecules are. And the second one is how well the molecules stick together. Solids are usually very heavy molecules. Liquids are a little bit lighter, and gases are the lightest of all. You can kind of think of it this way. It's very easy to throw a baseball high up into the air. But if you try to do the same thing with a heavy metal shot put, it'd be pretty difficult. Also, solids generally have molecules or atoms that are going to stick together really, really well. Whereas gases don't want to stick together. The stickiness of a molecule is called an intermolecular force. This word means forces between molecules. They're the forces that hold molecules together. You can click on the link to watch a video on intermolecular forces. So water's pretty weird because it's a liquid at room temperature. There are much heavier molecules that are gases at room temperature. For example, water has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. And this is pretty light. The lightest possible molecule is about 2 grams per mole. And heavy molecules can be tens of thousands of grams per mole. Now, by comparison, oxygen, which is a very common gas, it's actually really difficult to make oxygen into a liquid. It's twice as heavy uh, as water at 32 grams per mole. And yet oxygen is going to remain a gas. So why is water a liquid then? Well, it really depends on the second factor we talked about, the attraction of molecules. So if we were to zoom in on some water molecules, we'd be able to see what they look like. The red atom there is an oxygen atom, and the white ones are hydrogen atoms. Now, these molecules are just kind of floating around in the liquid, and they're stuck together, or at least attracted together, pretty well because water is a polar molecule which means the bonds between the atoms in the water molecule, these hydrogens and these oxygens, are not equal. And so oxygen has a slightly negative charge, while as each of the hydrogens has slightly positive charges. You can watch the video on bond polarity to learn a bit more of why that works. What happens in the solution is that the water molecules are going to move around and these positive and negative parts are going to kind of attract to each other. It's not as strong as a bond, but it's strong enough to hold the water molecules close together so that they remain a liquid. They're not able to easily fly away from each other and become a gas. There are quite a few different types of intermolecular forces. Water has the strongest of the intermolecular forces. This is called hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding occurs when uh, hydrogen is bonded to a very strong electronegative element such as oxygen and oxygen is able to pull away electrons from the hydrogen atom not fully but just enough that makes hydrogen have a slightly positive charge and oxygen a slightly negative charge this creates a very strong attraction with any other atom, uh, molecule that contains hydrogen and oxygen or something similar where hydrogen is attached to something very electronegative okay let's move on to the second property of water Water has a high surface tension. Surface tension is a term used to describe the surface of a liquid's ability to resist an external force. You may have seen uh, this bug here. It's called a water strider. Uh, maybe you've seen them on the lake or a pond in the summertime. They don't sink through the water. They're actually able to walk and glide across the water surface. And the reason is because they don't have enough force to break through the water and sink. Um, they're just too lightweight, and so they can't break through that. 
The reason for uh, water's high surface tension is once again due to hydrogen bonding. That's the stickiness of those molecules. So as these molecules are all kind of stuck together, those partially positive hydrogens, the white ones stick to the red ones, and they're loosely held together like that. Something like a water strider doesn't have the ability to break through. Now there are some things that can disrupt the surface tension of water. We call those things surfactants. In other words, soap. And soap is able to break through that, uh, that attraction and split up the water molecules. So for the same reason that water is a liquid, water has a high surface tension because of hydrogen bonding. Here's the last of the properties of water. Water is, uh, solid water is less dense than liquid water. This is the reason that ice floats um, on top of liquid water. This is very weird because most of the time, the solid version of a substance is going to be more dense and sink. And here's why. This is kind of what a liquid would look like. We'd have all the particles, these are represented by these green circles, kind of flowing past one another, able to move pretty freely. As an object cools, the molecules are going to be able to move less and less, and they're going to start packing themselves into a nice, neat order. And you can see that this is becoming more dense, which means it takes up less space. And so solids usually look nice and ordered, just like this. Now with water, the way it works is that we have all our molecules kind of moving around, able to flow past one another. This would be the liquid version. And they're moving kind of all over the place. You can see how they're packed together like that. But they're moving freely. They're kind of random. Now when water freezes, we get this happening. You can see how much more spread out it is. This is solid water. The reason it takes on this structure is because, once again, of the polarity or the hydrogen bonding of those molecules. So when these slow down, they pack themselves together and not able to move anymore uh, past one another. They're stuck together in that attraction. The hydrogens, the white atoms here, stick to any of the red ones. You can see we form these nice uh, hexagon shapes all throughout the surface. And so since there's more air pockets within the structure, it's going to float on top of liquid water. And those are the properties of water.